Hello, Nation. Today I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Jeremy Pettis. We have spoken previously on using basal insulin in people with type 2. Now we're going to talk about the importance of basal insulin in people with type 1 and how to adjust it. Yeah, I think it's such an important topic. So often I see patients come in and their blood sugars are high, they're low, very typical of type 1 diabetes. And for patients and providers, it can be really frustrating of where do you start? Do I talk about the carbs, the, the sensitivity factors? There's so many variables. Where do I start to help somebody get under control? Or even somebody who has really good control, you know, what are some things that you always need to touch on? You know what? I've heard you say many times that if your basal insulin isn't set correctly, you know, you're going to be all over the place. When we look at downloads from continuous glucose monitors, it's the foundation. It's the foundation. Yeah, now there's different basils out there. It's really important for you to know. When Jeremy and I were first diagnosed, like a century ago, uh, more than a century ago uh, for me, you know, we had MPH insulin. It peaks soon, it gets out of your system. You know, Lantus came along, it was a great addition. Levomir has been great. But lately, we have two new basal insulins, Traceba and 2J. I know, easy for me to say, huh? <laughs> and uh, these insulins really last 24 hours. They have very minimal peaks and valleys. You don't want peaks and valleys with basal insulin. And they are more consistent on a day-to-day -day basis. And you and I both agree that if you have type 1 and you're on multiple daily injections, those are the two basils to be on because it's really important to, to use your basal as a foundation. Yeah, I agree. If you're on shots, and actually most people in the U.S. are on shots, um, look into these two new insulins, Receiva and Tugeo. So how do you test it? So how do you test it? So again, it is the most important thing to establish. And once you get your basal insulin down, you don't need to really mess with it. Now take notes. And if you're a slow learner, just put your computer on freeze so you can see the so screen. Take a look at this screen. And the best time to test your basal insulin is overnight. And an, an ideal basal insulin, whether it's from a shot or from your pump, keeps your blood sugars flat. It's not supposed to let your blood sugars go down and it's not supposed to let them go up. So what we have people do is pick a night when you eat dinner pretty early, you know, let's say six o'clock, and don't eat after dinner. And so we want you going to bed with a good blood sugar that's flat, all right? So we usually say somewhere between 90 and 150. So pick a night between your 90 and 150. And if you have a CGM, this is easy. You can just look at what your blood sugars are overnight. If you don't have a CGM, actually waking up every couple of hours to test your blood sugar is important. And what you want to see is between that bedtime number and your waking up number, those shouldn't be different by more than 30 points or so. So if you're going to bed at 100, you should wake up around 100. But if you're going to bed at 100 and waking up at 200, then clearly you don't have enough insulin. And if you're going to bed at 100 and waking up at 60, then you have too much. And you can adjust by one unit or so, or maybe 0.1 of your basal rate from your pump each day and repeat this over and over and over again until you feel really confident that your basal is keeping you flat. Yeah, and so, it, you know, when you have a CGM, go to bed with a trend error like this in the, in the range that Jeremy was talking about. Now, during the day, it's a little tougher because we asked you to fast during the day. For folks that have to eat something for breakfast, I have them have a small breakfast, make sure your blood sugar after eating is pretty flat, and then go as long as you can up until dinner even and just watch your blood sugars. And during normal daily activities, you should be flat. And I've always told people, the best way to keep my diabetes under control is to stand perfectly still, don't eat, and don't exercise. And uh, you know, testing the basal during the day, you wanna do it on a different day so you're not fasting for 24 hours, unless you're getting a colonoscopy or yeah, something. Yeah, you know, this just came up for me because I, I recently have tried Tujeo, and you know, I'm trying to figure out my dose again, and this is so important to get it right. Yeah. How come you're not showing people your number, by, your, by the way? Well, it's not bad. It's 182. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. You know what? Not Usually bad. when you hide it, you're a little embarrassed by it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing, too, is why don't you tell them about that excellent resource with that oh, yeah. incredible author? This is a book I found in your desk. I don't know if you've ever read it. Oh, yeah. It's called Taking Control of Your Diabetes, which is uh, this handsome fellow right here. <laughs> Looks a lot like you. But uh, this is an excellent resource. We have a lot on CGM. That's where we talk about basal testing and things like that. So important for type ones. Even if you're old timer veteran, test your basal rate. You know, and one last thing. We want to give you the disclaimer. You really need to check with your caregiver before you make any changes in your insulin. That's it. So long, Nation. Nation.